How you folks doing today? It's Anthony again from MTE here in upstate New York. It's a little humid today, so I'm not in my full uh, get up. But uh, today we're just going to talk about your basic tune up on your lawnmower engine or any small engines. Um, a couple of tools you're going to need is a spark plug socket. There's uh, two different types of sizes. You would, basic sizes that you're going to run into is a 13 16 or a 5 8 they make specialty sockets for spark plugs. Um, I use a duckbill uh, pliers to take the fuel filter clamps off. I just use those. I like them. They're easier to get the clamps off with, and uh, you know I just I've always liked them. I've been using them for years. Uh, a needle nose pliers, any type of pliers could take that off. If you got worm clamps, you're going to need uh, a Phillips head or a flat head. Um, now, get your spark plug boot off. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it. You don't wanna just start yanking on the cord up here. You wanna get down to where the boot is and pop it off. You don't, cause if you end up pulling it out, you're gonna destroy it and you're gonna end up buying a new coil if they don't, you know, and a lot of people are gonna get you to right. buy a new coil. So, you know, you just slide your spark plug uh, socket in there. Yes. Some manufacturers send it with a spark plug wrench that they have or whatever, and it's, yeah. I've been in the trade. So once you crack it free, I take my socket right off and just spin it with your hands till the spark plug comes out. Now, if you had a running issue, if you seemed like it was running lean or too rich, uh, backfiring, one cylinder not running, your spark plug can be a real good teller of what's really going on in your engine. You need to slide and it on out. This is a decent burning engine. Um, if you see it all white, if you see a lot of oil build up around there, um, white would be lean, oil would, could be like a blown head gasket, you got uh, oil bypass somewhere. You know, it's just, it's a smart thing to do when you're doing your tune-ups is just cover all your bases. Um, it, if How I usually do it is if your air filter is dirty, this is, it's okay. You can probably run another season with this. We're gonna talk about cleaning your air filter today too. But if I seen these, see how there's the dirt lines, you're never gonna get those out. Um, but that's usually what I say is if you can see dirt in your air filter, your filter, your, your engine's ready for a tune up. Number one reason for engines to be blowing up is dirt ingestion. So if your air filter is, um, compromised in any way, it's going to suck dirt down into your intake, down into your engine, and you're going to end up seizing up your engine, popping a rod. You're not lubricating with oil. Um, but now back to the spark plug, I usually do the spark plugs near the end of my tune up cause I get my engine warm to drop the oil. I drop the oil. I'm doing other things on the tractor. You know, the oil's dropped. I put the oil filter on. I do the air filter. I do the fuel filter. I do the spark plugs last because when you go to tighten them down, if the aluminum head is warm, you can be able to strip your spark plugs out, the actual holder in the head. There's no, they, I mean, you can helicoil them. That's like a real backwoods style thing to do. I don't ever suggest that. Um, you, you end up buying a new head. So you got your spark plug screwed back in. It's snug there. And then just another quarter turn and your spark plugs in and you're good to go. And then make sure you push your spark plug boot back on and you should feel it pop in because it clips in onto the top of your spark we'll plug. Go to your air filter. This is a canister style air filter. You'll find this on 95% of your zero turns with a Kawasaki, Briggs, to anything. Most of it's a canister air filter. Now the only way I can suggest 
to cleaning out your air filter is to take it and tap it. Just tap it, lightly tap it around. You don't wanna bring no air wand to this, no compressed air, because what happens is these fine microns, papers that are here, will start shifting against the metal here and ripping holes. So you think you're doing good by blowing the dirt out, but you're allowing actually bigger molecules through this air filter and then down into your other one. See, this is your inner air filter. They, on other ones, you would have a pre-filter, like a, not a canister fil, um, air filter. They would have a pre-filter and then your main filter. On canisters, you got your inner filter that if you're replacing this, replace this. It, you don't just replace your outer filter. People do it. There's guys out there that swear by it, and I'm rebuilding their engines at least twice a season because they don't want to listen about taking correct maintenance to their machines. Um, but know that there is different styles of air filters for different canisters. If you get the wrong one, they're never going to fit in together. And you just gotta, you don't gotta go crazy, just make sure it gets back into its home. Now, if you have a duck bill, I always take my duck bill out when I'm doing it. See how there's dirt and debris in there? Clean that out, just, you know, uh, soapy water on a rag, wipe it down, wipe this down. This is okay to hit with pressed air if you want. Just make sure your duck bill goes back on. The duck bill is there, so if any reason water gets down into your air filter box, the water will flow down to the duck bill and come out. So you'll always want to try to have your duck bill. Sometimes it's hard to get it to where it needs to be. Somewhat pointing down, so water will flow and go out of your duck bill. And that's just another safety thing. You know, the safety for your engine. You know, so it's not sucking at, at water. Now we're gonna in. move on to the fuel filter. But luckily, this is a dual tank zero turn. So you turn your fuel valve to off. And if you don't have one, um, hemostats, line clippers. If you're in a pinch, take your vice grips with two pieces of rubber line, put them over your vice grip, put it over here. You don't want to crimp on here with any vice grip because it will end up damaging the hose. Um, and then all you pretty much do, see duck bill, hooks up beautiful with these hose clamps. And this slides it right off and you go into the other side, slide it on off, all right? And then you'll, we're not doing it, but you'd pull it off, put your new one in. Now know this also that your fuel filter is a one direction fuel filter. I'm gonna say nowadays, all your fuel filters are like that. Unless you got the small diaphragm ones that are red or uh, white, they're real small, they can flow anyway. But on your fuel filter, we'll have an arrow saying flow. Make sure your fuel filter is flowing towards the carburetor, towards your engine. From your fuel tank goes to the fuel filter, into your fuel pump, into your carburetor. If you put it on backwards, you're gonna have fuel issues. You're not gonna, you know, you're, it might not even start. You're not gonna have flow. You know, that's the number one thing you wanna do is to make sure you have flow coming to your carburetor. Now that's just like a basic, you know, tune up what you would wanna do. Um, I suggest if you're a commercial landscaper, every 40 hours, make sure your oil is, I, I push 40 hours for oil changes. Check your air filters, check your um, fuel filters. For a homeowner, you probably could do once a season, oil change, um, air filter, fuel filter, plugs, and you should be fine. Unless you're cutting 15 acres a week, then you're gonna run into back being into a commercial landscaper. Check your oil every 40 hours. Make sure, because you're at 40 hours, your oil will burn up and you'll have lack of power. You can end up blowing a rod, doing damage internally to your engine. But there's gonna be 
other videos that are going to be clipped in here to show you how to do the oil change we do have them on there the while you're doing your engine tune-up you should do your whole machine tune-up you know if you're doing your engine in the beginning of the season make sure your deck's good make sure your blades are all right make sure your belts are not chewed up you know go around hit all your grease fittings you know just make sure that you're all set up for the whole season because if you don't you're going to end up giving us a call and we're going to come pick up your unit and we're going to write you a bill another thing i was just thinking about rat's nest mice nest because i just ran into this with a other commercial uh landscaper he says you know i store it in a great area it has no mice has no mice mice cry and crawl up in between they because there's air passages that you really don't see and they will get they will cram themselves up in between here like in between the oil filter and the engine and they'll get up into the top of your cow link and they'll just start chewing up your coils chewing up wires that are under there if they don't chew up wires their rat their mouse nests will pack down around your cooling fins and another thing you need to do is make sure your cooling fins are blown out because if you start overheating you're going to start blowing a head gasket other things will start happening but that's another thing that you definitely want like to on these kawasaki's the fx's because this is not this this model comes with fuel injection they have these ports here so this is a 10 mil pops off and you can see um inside there. see if you look down in there that's your that's actually your cooling fins they're all nice and opened um you'll see grass debris coming out of your cow link here and over here if you got grass debris in there it is a little bit labor taking to take that cow link off but it's just a peace of mind you know you don't want to go and run your car without any coolant in it because you know it's going to overheat and pop that's the same type of thing because these are air cooled machines they need cool air to come through and take the heat away from the engine um, that's all i can really say about it today if you have any troubles with your tune-ups give us a call we'll come and do it for you have a nice one